tanker arson, the hunt for teenagers who left a shocking trail of destruction at this fuel depot. Put my nose. Hello from Becky and me. Welcome to the programme, the start of a brand new week. First tonight, the CCTV clues that could help catch arsonists who are thought to have set light to four diesel tankers in Essex. Dozens of firefighters from across Essex were called to West Station Yard in Malden on Saturday night. They battled to stop the flames spreading to nearby fuel storage tanks and homes. Now, detectives say they're trying to trace a group of teenagers seen running away from the scene moments after the fire began. Well, our correspondent Matthew Hudson is in Malden tonight. Matt, it sounds as if a disaster was averted. Very much so, Becky. You know, it's my experience that firefighters are a pretty modest bunch most of the time. They were certainly being modest today, downplaying just how important their role had been in averting a disaster on Saturday evening. Imagine the scene, trying to control a blaze that is engulfing four fuel tankers, which are just yards from huge silos containing an awful lot more fuel. It's a situation that I suspect most of us would not want to find ourselves in. Daylight reveals the full extent of the damage and how much worse it could have been. Four oil tankers burned out, good for nothing but the scrap heap, after arsonists set fire to them on Saturday evening. Well, from here you can see just how close the four tankers are to four extremely large fuel storage tanks. Of course, the main priority for the fire service on Saturday evening was to prevent the fire from spreading to those vats. If it had reached them, it's likely the fire service would have been dealing with a much more serious incident. These pictures show the scale of the task facing the firefighters who arrived at around 7 o'clock. Twelve crews spent more than two hours bringing the blaze under control, successfully keeping it away from the storage tanks. The fire is thought to be the work of arsonists. CCTV cameras recorded several teenagers running away from the scene as the fire started. Today, the fire chief who led the operation told us it was unbelievable that anyone could have deliberately endangered people's lives. I don't understand the rationale of anybody who, would, who in, uh, deliberately ignites anything, um, but in this particular instance, given the proximity of the houses and the rest of the uh, industrial estate here, yeah, you're quite right, a, um, a totally irrational act. Pam Cherry lives just yards from the site. Her home was among those evacuated during the crisis. She's always been scared that something like this could happen. I've thought that it could happen, and I've in fact, been on, um, on the t phone to the company, and they've really tried their hardest to put my fears at, uh, at bay. But nevertheless, it, it still concerns me that uh, we're so close. No one was hurt in the fire, but the police say someone easily could have been. They also say those responsible need to be found as soon as possible. Well, Matt, we can see how close those tankers are to the storage tank. It's not surprising, is it, that the police are taking this incident so seriously? There's nothing else that they could do, Jonathan. I know the police and the fire service putting their heads together, looking back through recent records to see if this crime can be linked to any others that have uh, happened in this part of Essex over the last few weeks. They are very determined to catch those involved. They say that any friends or relatives who suspect they know someone who might be involved should phone 0300 333 444. That's 0300 333 444. As you say, extremely keen to find those responsible before something else happens. I'm sure they are. Matt Hudson, thank you very much for that. Right, next, the growing anger over the possibility of our politicians using parliamentary privilege to avoid court proceedings over their expenses claims. Tory peer Lord Hanningfield resigned as leader of Essex County Council on Friday and had the party whip withdrawn after being charged with false accounting. Three Labour MPs were also charged. Now, the MPs' decision to use parliamentary privilege to defend themselves has been widely criticised, but it's still unclear if Lord Hanningfield will follow suit. Well, we're now joined from Westminster by political correspondent Phil Hornby. Phil... This saga just rumbles on and on. Yeah, it sure does, uh, Jonathan. As you say, we're not sure yet whether Lord Hanningfield is preparing to go down this route, but the three MPs definitely are. They confirmed that today. So if they were to try and use parliamentary privilege and were to win, then that would obviously have big, big uh, implications for Lord Hanningfield's case. You remember on Friday, the leader of Essex County Council resigned when the DPP said he was facing six charges of dishonestly claiming expenses that he knew 
he wasn't entitled to. Now, you might want to know what parliamentary privilege is. Well, normally it's regarded as a great safeguard. It means that MPs, members of the House of Lords, can stand up in the building behind me, in the chamber, and say more or less anything without fear of being sued for slander. It also means that programmes like this can report everything that's said in that building be behind us without uh, the threat of being sued for libel. That's parliamentary privilege, and nobody's ever heard of it being used for anything else. And, Phil, there's a, an MP from our region in the news today because of the expenses scandal. Yes, indeed. Nadine Doris, the Bedfordshire MP. Now, she's considering taking legal action against the Daily Telegraph for an article in which they claimed that she got £35,000 of public money and given it to a friend. She says that's nonsense. This friend was actually an employee of hers and had been for more than 10 years. Nadine Doris says she has done absolutely nothing wrong and she is considering suing the Daily Telegraph for libel. I don't think the Telegraph could use a defence of parliamentary privilege if, if that one came to court. But as you say... This saga rumbles on and on and uh, will continue to do so. We've not seen the last of it by any means yet. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. Now, tributes have been paid today to a 12-year-old girl who died during a PE lesson at a school in Northamptonshire. Staff at Kettering Science Academy tried desperately to save Joanne Watson when she collapsed on Friday afternoon. Today, the school offered counselling to her friends. Claire McGlasson has this report. Arriving at the gates with flowers this morning, students at Kettering Science Academy going back to school knowing one of their friends won't be with them. 12-year-old Joanne Watson died during a lesson on Friday. Some of her friends were there. She collapsed surrounded by her classmates during a PE lesson on Friday afternoon. Staff battled to try and save her while an ambulance was called but she was pronounced dead on arrival at Kettering General Hospital. Staff and students are being offered counselling. This morning the school held assemblies in Joanne's memory. I think it's uh, the same sort of response that a, that a large family would make is, is, is what we're trying to do here. By the account of her friends, she was outgoing, she was very friendly, she was vivacious and lively and was very well liked in, amongst her classmates and in the school. While friends have turned to internet sites like Facebook to share their memories, family have left their own tributes here where she died. Now all are waiting to find out how and why it happened. Claire McGlasson, Anglian News, Kettering. Well, next, his contribution to British jazz and to music in our region can't be overestimated. Sir John Dankworth's death was, was announced on Saturday night by his wife, Dame Cleo Lane, at a 40th anniversary concert for the theatre he founded near Milton Keynes. Emma Baker looks back at a life full of music. He was a giant of the British jazz scene, an internationally acclaimed musician with a career spanning more than half a century. On Saturday evening, the death of Sir John Dankworth was announced by his wife and fellow jazz musician Dame Cleo Lane at the 40th anniversary concert for the Stables Theatre in Wavendon near Milton Keynes. It was the music venue they had founded together. And this gives life to Deeply saddened. I think um, it came as a real shock to us all. Um, John had been ill for some time, but um, he was a real fighter and was absolutely determined he was going to be part of our 40th um, anniversary celebration. So it was particularly poignant when we heard the news. Sir John Dankworth, or Johnny as he was better known, was born in Woodford in Essex in 1927. He won a place at the Royal Academy of Music at the age of 17 and was voted British Musician of the Year in 1949. He and his wife became one of jazz's best-known partnerships. In 1969, they founded a charity which led to the birth of the Stables, a venue built in their back garden designed to introduce music to more people. The couple were both honoured for their services to music. Cleo Lane became a dame in 1997 and Johnny received his knighthood in the 2006 New Year's Honours List. Well, I was so glad that jazz received it that I thought uh, if you didn't accept this one, you'd be a real traitor to the music you loved.
Rod Argent, founding member of the 60s pop group The Zombies, has been a close friend of Sir John's for many years. He performed at the concert on Saturday night. Today, at his home near Bedford, he spoke to Anglia News about his memories of working with such a talented man. A very funny man, a uh, terrific sense of humour. I don't mind if I, I don't know if Cleo will mind me saying this, but she actually said when she told us uh, about John's passing when she came back from the hospital that um, his last words apparently were another fine mess you've got me into, which is sort of a wonderful uh, example of, of the sort of humour he always had. He, he, I'm sure he was there in spirit, and I'm sure he, uh, he would have adored the fact that the concert went on. Today, tributes have been paid to the 82-year-old from around the world. Sir John Dankworth's 65-year career may now have come to an end, but he leaves behind a legacy that will live on for many years into the future. Emma Baker, 